Good evening, you're watching this week with me, Winston Mavor. The focus of discussion this evening is one critical and fundamental component of, uh, you know, business and entrepreneurship, and this is SME financing. I am privileged this evening to be hosting one of Zambia's industry titans, and this is in the person of Ms. Ngamelu, who is currently serving as a Barclays Bank Zambia PLC Managing Director. You're welcome to Biz Week, Ms. Melu. Thank you very much, Winston. Thank you so much. Good to have uh, Thank you for having me here. Okay. So... I am quite aware that, you know, Barclays has been undergoing, if not undergone, mm -hmm. a name change as you yeah. and I speak. So before we get right into our conversation, would you just elaborate briefly on that? Right. So, you know, as you are aware, ba uh, Barclays has been in Africa for more than 100 years. You know, in countries like Egypt, Barclays has been there for even 150 years. But in Zambia, to be specific, uh, Barclays had been here, PLC had been here for 100 years until... You know, last year we decided, or they decided, that it was important for them to deconsolidate just because of some regulatory issues that they had in the UK. Uh, so uh, we already had an existing brand in South Africa. So Barclays was part of a brand called APSA in South Africa. And, um, you know, during that time we decided that it was important that we had minority shareholders. So we have, uh, you know, two minorities of which one of them is Barclays POC. So they're still very much part of the bank, but they're minority shareholders. And of course, the uh, South African Pension Fund is also a minority shareholder, uh, you know, with 14.9% uh, shares. And the rest really are listed on the stock exchange uh, in South Africa. Uh, so last year we decided that it was important for us to change our name and uh, we should change from Barclays to APSA. Uh, so we will be called APSA, uh, you know, uh, next year, this time, we'll be called APSA. Uh, so right now we have commenced a journey, which is a very interesting journey, of that change from Barclays into APSA. Uh, and there are a lot of things you're going to see in the process while you're doing that. I think, firstly, our technology, you know, is going to continue being enhanced because it's important that we do that while we're moving from Barclays to APSA. But I think most importantly is in the brand. We are changing our name to APSA. We are changing how we're going to look. Our look and feel is going to be more an array of red. Mm. Uh, but most importantly, what's in the brand? So in the brand is we want ourselves to be known as, or we want APSA to be known as a bank that brings possibilities to life. So when we're looking at Diamond TV, we're saying, how do we bring your possibilities to life, you as a journalist, you know, the studio, our clients, uh, you know, the regulators, how do we work on doing that? You know, in this environment right across the continent, it's important for us to bring that Africanacity, mm -hmm. you know, where we are really saying we can have challenging times, but in all that we have to be brave, passionate and ready. And that's what you're going to be seeing. And that's the journey we are on. You will see our branches change towards the end of the year. Uh, but into next year, we're going to be called APSA. Brilliant, uh, you know, sense of uh, pan-Africanism over there, of course, yeah. coupled with innovation. Yeah. But our focus of discussion this evening it has to do or hinges on the issue of, uh, you know, SME yeah. financing. And yeah. I know that Barclays Bank does interact yeah. with SMEs quite on a large scale. Yeah. And what I'd love to find out is, what is it that the bank is doing to ensure that, you know, as a strategic partner, mm -hmm. okay, of uh, emerging SMEs mm -hmm. and those that are already established mm -hmm. as SMEs and those that are trying to seize opportunities within the Zambian SME space. Mm -hmm. What are some of the initiatives that you're doing to be able to cater to the needs that would bring about growth for these particular critical people of our economy? Yeah. So you see, I mean, SME, we always say, is an engine of growth. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of the economy. So when you look at the various, uh, you know, sectors, you know, of uh, of the economy, SME is right at the center of everything that that uh, the economy is, is getting involved in, uh, what's really driving the economy. And at the center of that, we believe that, you know, as Barclays, yes, we have the corporates, uh, you know, we, we have uh, the large corporates, but really we also have a very huge SME, you know, portfolio. And for us, it's how do we help businesses grow? And, um, you know, in terms of our offering, you know, to the SMEs, you know, we have realized that SMEs are very busy people. Like you, when you talk about innovation and the app, is how do we really provide that 24-7 
access you know to their banking services so it's not just about individuals but it's also about them as sme if you want to check your balances if you want to make transfers if you want to buy foreign exchange if you want to make any payments as an sme us as barclays we will provide you you know an an app where you can download uh you know a business banking app and you'll be able you know to really transact 24 7. then we also realized that it was important for us to bring in linkages between zambia and other trading partners, say mm. the China, the mm. Chinese. Uh, you know, we understand that, you know, whether we like it or not, China is going to be one of Zambia's, you know, biggest trade partners. So what we do is that we, you know, on an annual basis, we actually take our Chinese, uh, so our Zambian, you know, SMEs, those who are starting and who've been there for a while, we then take them into China. Uh, so just last year, towards the end of last year, we took about 15, uh, you know, Zambian SMEs and we took them into China and they were able, and we opened doors for them. So it's not just taking them into China, but it's when they get there, mm -hmm. we then introduce them, you know, because of our network, we introduce them to other big Chinese houses and really based on that, they're able to come back and grow their businesses. But this is something that we will continually do on an annual basis and the numbers will continue to grow uh, you know, as we're doing that. But we also run a procurement summit. Uh, you know, we run, we've sponsored the biggest procurement summit that was there, you know, last year. And we continue to do that because it's about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do you, you know, ensure that an SME is going to be have a bankable proposal, um, you know, that they can bring into the bank and, uh, you know, you can actually, you know, help them grow. So there's a lot we do, you know, with the, with the SMEs, but this is really just some of the, some of the things that, that we do. Indeed, mm -hmm. you know, brilliant uh, mm -hmm. capacity building stuff that, you yeah. know, you are involved in mm -hmm. that should be able to uplift SMEs, you know, mm -hmm. out there and give them hope. Mm -hmm. But some of the challenges that, you know, SMEs have repeatedly and persistently, you know, mentioned is the issue of the cost of mm -hmm. finance mm -hmm. that, you know, strategic institutions like yours, mm -hmm. you know, attach to mm -hmm. some of the services that you can provide. How is Barclays Bank, you know, addressing that particular component? Look, I mean, the cost of doing business is one that our SMEs will always expect a lot of support from the bank. And uh, what we try and do is, you know, to try and really mitigate that cost by just ensuring that, you know, we're looking at an SME holistically and also looking at the linkages that they have. So, for example, if an SME, you know, is providing a service to the mine, yes, we're going to look at the SME in isolation, but we're also going to look at how are we mitigating this risk by ensuring that they have a ready market. So if they have a ready market and we are so sure that, you know, those linkages are working, then you find that the price is much much lower uh, than, you know, an ordinary SME who will just come in and say, look, I'm just starting and I'm not sure where my market is going to be and, and, and. Then obviously the price there would be higher, but mostly, you know, if you have those linkages, then you find that we are able to give affordable pricing. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, very interesting indeed. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that SMEs play quite a significant role, you know, in development. And when you look at Zambia as a developing economy, obviously we know that we cannot run away from ensuring that SMEs are being incorporated into. So what I'd like to find out, this is a potential sector. Mm -hmm. is, 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 is Barclays going to do anything out of the ordinary, mm -hmm. you know, to ensure that this sector is adequately maximized. I know that there's a lot of talk on SMEs out there and a lot of people yeah. talk about a variety of services that they're mm -hmm. offering to SMEs. But when you get to the actual SMEs on the yeah. ground, the majority of them, you'll find that there is this huge discrepancy between the opportunity yeah. that an institution like yours has mm -hmm. for an SME mm -hmm. and for that SME understanding that particular opportunity. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, I think number one, it's about the financial literacy. Um, you know, how do we get to the level? I mean, summits is one thing. And, uh, you know, like I say, we do sponsor summits. But like you rightly say, when you get to an SME uh, who, you know, in the Copper Belt, you have a lot of them who are, who, who are, say, supporting the mines, is how do you really get to that level where you have either one-on-one -on -one interaction or you bring them in a focus group and really explain to them how the different sectors impact their business? 
So it's really about understanding the different sectors that we have in the economy, be it manufacturing, you know, mining, uh, you know, energy, uh, farming, uh, from the agriculture side, you know, tourism, and just say, look at the different sectors and what the sectors have to have to offer, and really explaining those value linkages, you know, for the SME, so that by the time you are able to help them come into the bank to bring this bankable proposal, then you would have really done a lot of work in in really supporting them, because that's the real differentiator is walking the journey with them. We are always very excited when we see some SMEs who were very small and they only started, you know, have only been around for a few years, like two years, and now you see like they're running big, you know, corporates. And, uh, you know, we are proud to walk that journey. So our idea, what makes Barclays a key differentiator is how do you help an SME grow from one level to another? How do you help them grow by providing them the markets, you know, by allowing them to see that you can give them actually affordable finance. Uh, and so that financial literacy and walking with the journey with them is something that we, we totally pride ourselves in. Mm -hmm. I'm glad with the fact that you know you have repeatedly mentioned the issue of financial literacy, which I believe is actually very key to synergizing the relationship between your firm and those prospective you know, SMEs that we have and that may be watching us right mm -hmm. now. Going forward, when we talk about the national financial inclusion strategy that was launched, which I believe, you know, your sector is a very huge, you know, supporter mm -hmm. of, will this strategy, if implemented successfully, mm -hmm. or how will this strategy, if implemented successfully, benefit firms like yours? Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, our firms, uh, if the financial sector, uh, Barclays, is truly dependent on the SME. It's not really the other way around. We need them more than they need us mm. because they have a huge choice out there of a number of banks that they can choose. But when we have an SME that is linked, you know, to Barclays, uh, and then th there's no way we can we cannot succeed. Uh, so it's really important that uh, you know we continue working with them. But I think most importantly is how do we also give back, you know, to the SMEs beyond just the financial literacy that you're talking about? How do we give back in the community, to the communities that we are operating in? And which is why we have, um, you know, what we call a shared growth um, initiative in the bank. And with the shared growth initiative is how do we, as the bank is growing, the community should also be growing the SMEs should also be growing beyond just the financial pillars. The financial pillars are very important, but how do we partner with them and actually work with them? So those are some of the other areas that we would be working on in terms of give back to the community, but beyond just the financial interest, because we've spoken about that, mm. but in many other areas, so that you're also growing the community that they're also growing in. Mm. Okay, so one of the issues that was, you know, uh, that the financial sector was apparently grappling with, I think in the last quarter, if not the last half of mm -hmm. last year, was the issue of uh, non-performance loans. Mm -hmm. How was that affecting, you know, key and strategic institutions like your firm, that are very, very much needed by that SME over there. Yeah, so look, I mean, the average non-performance loan uh, portfolio on the market is around, say, 11%, but that's at industry level. Okay, so industry, so 11%, to be honest, is quite high, because I think as an industry, we should be at 5% or less. I think if we're at 5% or less, then it means we're doing something right. Number one, we are identifying, you know, the right, uh, you know, clients, but also we are we are educating them on the importance of being able to pay back on time, and 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 and. So I think it's important that uh, that we're doing that. However, last year, you know, you're right. The the, the NPOs have, you know, continued to increase. But I'm just going to speak for Barclays. I think from a Barclays point of view, our NPOs have been very, very well managed. We're still very much at a single digit, less than 5%. And uh, we are uh, at those manageable levels uh, because we have understood the value of understanding the economy, i.e. the different sectors, and understanding the value chain. When you understand the value chain, you give an SME value in terms of the market, mm. you are able to help them control the price, mm -hmm. and you are able to actually support them in their product proposition. So you are bringing focus to the business, and that is where we pride ourselves in. And by doing that, we are able to grow the SME business, 
but equally we are able to keep the NPLs in check. So I guess for the market and even at bankers association level that's what we are continually pushing for that it's important that we keep the npos to the managing level because that way then the risk factors means you can bring more productive mm -hmm. sme on board as opposed to you know the the the, the npo ratios going to to the double digit which is where they are now and we shouldn't really be there mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, the other issue is you know half the time as you know ordinary uh, you know, uh, customers mm -hmm. that subscribe to most of these financial institutions. Whenever the central bank, you know, makes an adjustment to the policy rate, mm -hmm. it is our rudimentary expectation, or should I say it is our expectation that emanates from a rudimentary kind of understanding that immediately there is supposed to be an adjustment on the part of yeah. banks. Yeah. yeah. So how, uh, maybe if you could explain that dynamic. To be honest, it's there. And okay. maybe it's not that evident to everyone. And the reason why, so, so let, let me just explain what you're When the central bank, like they're meeting next week to talk about the monetary policy rate, mm. and uh, they will look at the economy and uh, where the interest rate should be. Mm. And uh, if the rates increase, uh, then technically, you know, we are saying that is really the benchmark of where we should be pricing. Okay? But equally, if the monetary policy reduces, then we should just follow suit. And we do. But the visibility mm. comes in the fact that each customer is different. Mm. So each customer is different, and we're going to deal with you in your individual capacity. So we're not going to go and announce and say, okay, this is what we've done for you, just because, you know, we, mm. we have, you know, as banks, we have a lot of confidentiality issues. Mm. You know, what we do for you and what we do, you know, to the next person is very confidential, but we do. So in short, to answer your question, we do directionally follow what the central bank is doing because the monetary policy rate is the benchmark. And this regulatory is the benchmark, is what we should be following. But what we add or subtract, it just depends on the risk factor that we have with you. So yours might not necessarily be the same as the person sitting next to you because you're different mm -hmm. and the businesses you're running are different. Okay, mm. so I remember the president did mention that, you know, agriculture is the future of Zambia yeah. and encouraged upon the youth and every Zambian to take an interest in that particular sector. Are there some, you know, uh, opportunities that Barclays Bank perhaps is exploring mm -hmm. to promote, you know, uh, enterprise in this particular sector? Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, agriculture, um, you know, remains, you know, alongside the SME, in my view, remains really the real, uh, you know, engine of growth. And, um, you know, it's a sector that we have, uh, you know, been promoting a lot. But when you look at what does really a farmer, what does a farmer really need for them to be able to grow and start their business and, doing, and do well? And uh, some of the conversations we've been having with the Zambia National Farmers Union alongside the banker have been, I think, firstly, we need to understand the farmer uniquely. You can't deal with the farmer the way you are dealing with the corporate because the two are, are are different. A farmer looks, you know, at a season like now we're in the rainy season. It, it's not about this season, but it's about the long term. Mm. So, I think the challenge with the farmers have been: Do banks really understand that this is a long term view that we must take? So, I think as the president is pushing for the agriculture sector, us as bankers, our job is. How do we understand the farmer from a long-term point of view? And we're not talking about three years. We're talking about five to ten years. So one thing we've started doing as Barclays is to now start, uh, you know, giving you know loans to farmers that go as far as ten years or even more in some cases. So that way, a farmer will have good season and they'll have bad season. But when you extrapolate the season, they will do well and then they're gonna they're gonna grow. So that's one thing that we look at. The next one is in how do we provide the equipment that they need? Every farmer will need whether you're a small farmer, you just need a tractor, or whether you are you know a big farmer and you need uh, you know some 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 bigger equipment. We are able to provide you with the equipment that we need that you need. So what we provide is that we provide uh, what we are calling the leasing uh, equipment leasing finance, uh, where you know you are able to just you know go and say this is the equipment I'm looking for. It's yours, but the bank is going to pay for it, and you can pay for us for it on a, on a bit by bit basis. So those are the probably just to stick to those two big issues is we provide, you know, the equipment leasing finance, what we're calling the asset-backed finance, but also we are providing funding 
on a long-term basis. So when you do that, you find that the farmers will obviously be in a better position. Because, you know, some cases there will be more rains. In other cases, there will be less rains. In some cases, we'll get about right. In some cases, there will be, you know, there will be many other issues that, that come through. So you have to understand the farmer from a long-term point of view. Okay. Uh, the other issue probably that maybe I'll take an interest to find out from you, mm -hmm. you know, just how it is impacting your sector and probably how you are, you know, maximizing or maybe seeing opportunities therein is the issue of uh, the mounting debt that Zambia currently has. Mm -hmm. How is it impacting the financial sector at large mm -hmm. from your perspective? Uh, look, I mean, I, I think the most important thing to see is that when you look at where we are economically, I think there have been a lot of positive aspects that we have seen in the economy. Uh, yes, we understand that the fiscal is something that we need to continually deal with as an economy, and the Minister of Finance you know, is doing a great job in dealing with that. Uh, but I think the main thing is when you look at the monetary policy. Mm. The monetary policy has remained very positive. Inflation has been at single digit. Mm. When you look at the currency, yes, the currency we've seen uh, you know, it moving from about 10 to 12, but that's really a global shift. Mm -hmm. You know, globally, it doesn't matter which economy you look at, you are seeing, you know, the currency move in some cases a steeper depreciation than what we're seeing in Zambia. So it's been steadily moving from about, you know, 10 to where we are now, which is 11, uh, you know, about 11, nearly 12. But to be honest, these are manageable moves. And really, when you really look at, um, you know, many other factors that follow, I think the, moni the central bank has got the monetary policy right. The start reserve ratio, mm -hmm. you know, where we are at 5%, it's the lowest, you know, in the whole region. So meaning there's more liquidity in the market. And because there's more liquidity in the market, it just means we have, you know, we have more money to promote uh, the productive sector. Okay. As we get to wrap up this conversation, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, uh, over the weekend, the president did append a signature on the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement mm -hmm. that obviously would increase Africa's combined GDP mm -hmm. and also provide a significant market that, mm -hmm. you know, entrepreneurs, emerging manufacturers and all kinds of people within the space of enterprise can be able to tap into. Mm -hmm. Is this an opportunity for the mm -hmm. financial sector? Look, I mean, it's always an opportunity. Trade is... Um, one of the biggest uh, opportunities that we have, you know, as, as a, you know, as a, as a continent, and it's trade within within uh, within Africa and trade outside Africa, and when we sign agreements like the way you know the agreement that you're talking about, that will allow us, you know, to have free trade, you know, in form of taxes, you know, in form of being able to do more trade with with other you know countries. I think this is something that can benefit our clients, and when our clients you know benefit, then then we're in a good space. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for coming thank through you very to this Ms. Melu. Thank you very much. So my guest this evening, ladies and gentlemen, has been Ms. Mzinga Melu, who is Managing Director from Barclays Bank PLC Zambia. And the conversation was hinging on SME finances, providing insights on what really, you know, is or comprises the relationship between SMEs and financial institutions and what could be done to abridge this particular gap so that we create a Zambia you know, that will ensure that the 2030 middle income, you know, society that we are building towards becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. Of course, my guest is not an ordinary woman going by the accolades that, you know, I have over here. I mean, the list is just too long to go. Yeah, yeah, no wonder I'm referring it. to you as an industry <laughs> titan, you know. But don't anyway, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that, you know, the viewers know that when we talk about issues we talk to the right people and Thank we you. make sure that you know we talk to people that can make things happen we hope to host you again yeah, on this week anytime thank you very much and it was a real honor okay Thanks. have a lovely evening ladies thank and gentlemen you. and thank you for watching this week see you next week thanks thank you